So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about a new lens that I picked up last week and was able to take with me on a recent trip. It's the Nikon 50mm 1.8 S lens for the Z-mount cameras. Now I have the Nikon Z5 here, and if you've seen some of my other videos on this camera, I'm having, you know, like a love-hate relationship with this camera. I took it away with me. I was away last week, and um, I was down in Florida. So if you're new to the channel, my name's Bill, and uh, Eric is the other half of this channel, and we do all sorts of photography reviews and gear reviews and teach about photography. But we were down in Florida together, and uh, we went to Walt Disney World for one day. We um, had to go to Tampa to pick up a truck that I was buying. We said, let's go into the Disney parks. And if you're not familiar with us, we've been shooting in the Disney parks for years. And we have a couple of coffee table books that we put out about the Disney parks. We have a Facebook and Instagram page called Disney Image Makers. I know for me, this is where I really was able to hone my photography skill. There's, um, It's an environment where there's a there's pretty much every photographic situation you're going to come up against. You can take portraits of family members and, you know, friends or whoever you're there with. There's fireworks. There's a lot of night photography that can be had. There's lighting is perfect in the Disney park. So there, there, things are lit up certain ways. You know, you just can find almost any shooting environment possible inside these theme parks. That was a perfect place for me to go and test out not only my camera, but this new lens. So during the course of this video, I'm going to be showing you images uh, that I've taken. Now I took a few hundred, maybe four or five hundred images in one day, but about 70 of them were shot with this uh, lens, the 50 millimeter. Now this is a, let me take it off the camera and show it to you. So just as a frame of reference, this is about how big it is. It's a, you know, it, it fits on the camera nicely. It's not a small 50 millimeter. It, it's actually a very substantial feeling lens. It feels like it has a metal body. It, it's just a, it's a nice solid feeling lens and it's pretty heavy. This is the Nikon 24 to 70 F4. So they're almost the same size. If you've ever owned a 50 millimeter lens, you know it's a very versatile uh, focal length. It's, a, it's almost like a, um, like a, a perfect walk around lens. It, you can, take pictures of people without getting their faces distorted that sometimes will happen with a wide angle lens but it's still wide enough that you can you know capture a, a lot of the scene that you're looking at you know sometimes telephoto lenses uh, you can't get everything in you constantly have to move back so this is that like midpoint and it, it's a it's a perfect focal length to have in your bag and the 1.8 aperture is really great for creating a shallow depth of field so right off the bat I'm gonna tell you I almost never shoot a lens like this at anything other than 1.8. Every single image that I'm going to show you today was shot at 1.8. That's where you want to test these lenses. Now I've done reviews of other 50 millimeter 1.8s, 1.4s, and in the comments I'll hear people tell me how sharp these lenses get once you get over f4. That's not where I'm using this lens. This is a lens that I'm buying specifically to shoot, you know, a shallow depth of field. This 24 to 70 at 50 millimeters, I could shoot it at four. What do I need this for then? You know what I mean? So this is where you want to use it. You want to use it wide open and you don't have to, but that's why I got this lens. So how does this compare to other 50 millimeters that are out there? Um, I have owned Canon's Nifty 50, which I don't like. I've owned Nikon's 1.4 and Nikon's 1.8 version of this lens for the F mount. Both of those are very nice lenses. Uh, I've also owned Sigma's 1.4 version of this lens, which is probably twice the size and twice the price. So this lens comes in around $500. The Sigma, when I bought it, was close to $900. And to be honest with you, I think this is just as sharp. And this lens really impressed me. It's fast focusing. It's um, quiet. You don't hear the focus motors at all. Um, so it's great if you're in a situation where you need to be silent shooting. And with these mirrorless cameras now, you can do that. It has a 62 millimeter filter thread, which turned out to be a little bit of a problem for me because I didn't even realize this. I picked up the lens from my friend. Um, I bought it used from him. Uh, he had bought the 50 millimeter 1.2. So I you know, purchased this from him used and without even realizing that it, it has a pretty small f uh, filter thread. So most of my filters are 77 millimeters and I didn't have a step down ring to make it work on this camera. So I was shooting in the midday, wide open. Uh, luckily it was a cloudy, you know, overcast day. So that worked out. But if it was a sunny day, I wouldn't have been able to shoot this wide open, 
you know, I would have just let too much light into the camera. Even with the shutter speed of 8,000, it, it wouldn't have, um, I just wouldn't have been able to do it. Everything would have been overexposed. So that's one of the reasons why you make sure you have uh, some ND filters with you when you go out, especially if you're going to shoot on a lens that has a, a, a really wide aperture, 1.2, 1.4, 1 1.8, even 2.8 sometimes on a bright sunny day, you know, you're not able to shoot at that wide of an aperture. So let's go through some images. You know, we were in the Magic Kingdom down in Disney World. Uh, the first image here is just a picture I took of Eric just to see, you know, this is the first time I put it on the camera, took a picture. And it, the autofocus for the eye grabbed his eye, and it, I think it's a pretty sharp shot of his eye. And you can see how the 1.8 depth of field, you could see the fall off, you know, in front of his eye, even his eyelashes are a little out of focus. And then behind him towards his ear is also out of focus. So you need your autofocus to be spot on because if it misses, um, things are going to be blurry. The next image here is just an image I took of a sign and it just demonstrates the shallow depth of field that you can get with this lens. So here's that classic shot that you might have seen just looking down Main Street USA at the uh, Cinderella Castle right at the end there. Typically I would shoot from here with a 70 to 200 at 200 millimeters and you want to bring everything in, get some compression, but I was testing this lens out. So I focused on the castle and took a picture at 1.8. When you look at it wide, it actually looks okay. But when you zoom in tight, it's not as sharp as I would have hoped. Now, I don't know because I, I'm going to show you some other images here where it was tack sharp. But maybe this was just a little too far and the focus, you know, I, I don't know. I just took one shot like this. I don't have a bunch to compare. So, you know, from a distance it looks okay. But up close, I'm not loving this far of a distance at 1.8. So here's a picture of uh, a statue that they have right in the middle of the hub of Magic Kingdom there. And if you look at the statue of Mickey Mouse here, you can see how sharp this lens is. You see every detail, every, you know, every little bit of, of this image here. And again, it gives you a nice separation between the background uh, with the shallow depth of field. So this image here is interesting because it's a, uh, I shot it vertically. And as you can see, there's a little vignetting around there. And this is something that I did notice with this lens you will get a little vignetting around the edges, which is just a darkening around the edges. And with one click in your editing program, with the lens correction tool in Lightroom, it cleans it right up. And here's the edited image. Now, I changed the sky in this because it was such a lousy day, but the, the castle is what is in focus here, and it is really super sharp. And, you know, this turned out to be a pretty decent image from, you know, when I look at the original image, it was, you know, kind of lousy. So, you know, the, the lens helps you capture these you know, sharp images, but then you have to learn how to edit so you can actually sometimes make lemonade out of lemons, if you know what I mean. If you've seen any of my reviews of the Z5, I've been having issues with the autofocus, especially in dark situations. So it was really important for me to give this camera a test drive with a lens that is gonna let as much light as possible in. And that's exactly what I did. So we went into some of the attractions that were dark and um, I've shot these with other cameras and other lenses. So I have a really good knowledge of what I should be able to get and what is a tough shot to get. And, and I have to say that the mirrorless camera, I think any mirrorless camera is gonna make life easier for you shooting in a dark environment, if that's where you shoot typically. Is the autofocus as good as on a DSLR? That is what I'm trying to figure out. But the controls and the functions of a mirrorless I find it easier to shoot with. Now, I was able to get some good images. The first images here are from the Haunted Mansion. And this, if you've ever been in this, it's almost pitch black inside this attraction. So it's very hard to get usable images here. And so I was actually able to capture some images that I was never able to capture with a DSLR. I also have plenty of other images that are completely blurry that I was able to capture with a DSLR. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but the autofocus, when it does lock on, it locks on and I get a good image. And it's actually, um, it seems like it's easier to grab that focus in a dark environment. The problem is it doesn't always grab it. And that's the issue I'm having with this camera. But when it does, the lens gave me a nice sharp image and uh, everything was fine. And these were all shot at like ISO 10,000. So they're not the sharpest images but these are images that are very hard to get. In a dark environment, this lens lets in a lot of light and um, it did its job. The camera I had some issues with. Here's a few more images from a different attraction. Uh, this one's called Peter Pan's Flight. Again, uh, you're moving at a pretty 
decent speed and you're in a dark environment shooting it like ISO 8000, 10,000 and trying to capture some things as they go by you. And again, the autofocus was hit and miss here. But the lens, when it did capture focus, I was able to get better images than I would typically get in this spot. And I was happy with that. So the lens performed pretty well in this situation. Again, Pirates of the Caribbean, same thing. Uh, in here, you're moving much slower and I was able to get many more images in focus and they were sharp and the lens did a really nice job. So I was happy with everything that I was able to take in this environment. So the camera, when it has a few seconds, can you know grab focus and you're able to get nice images and the lens worked perfectly in this situation. Okay, so I came back outside and I wanted to test you know the, the lens again and I was at, out in front of Cinderella Castle and I took some pictures of the castle here and uh, just look at how sharp these images are. Again, at 1.8 and I'm probably standing, oh, I don't know, you know, at 50 millimeters, I'm probably standing maybe 100 feet away from the, from the castle here and it's nice and sharp and, you know, I had no issues here. And then uh, a little parade went by and I, I was able to get a couple of images of the characters as they went by and you'll see the separation between the character and the castle in the background. So you, you can, even in a wide situation where I was standing back at 50 millimeters, I'm still able to get a little bit of an out of focus area and the images are nice and sharp. So this is a very nice lens. Uh, it's not an inexpensive lens. You're not gonna pay $125 like the uh, Canon Nifty 50 or even Eric was telling me about his, he bought a 50 millimeter 1.8 version that Canon just put out for the R line of cameras. His, his is an R5. So he doesn't love his, you know, he, he said it's not super sharp. Uh, so this is a really nice in-between lens. It's not $1,000 and it's not $125. You know, it falls right in the middle at about 400 and change, but it's a very nice lens. Fast focusing, quiet, a little bit of vignetting, but uh, it's sharp. This is a very sharp lens. So I hope if you're thinking about one of these lenses, uh, you know, this is, this is something that I recommend. I definitely recommend, and I'm gonna try to use it more often. This is my problem right now. I gotta figure out what to do with this because I'm really, this camera is giving me fits. And in some, some ways it's spectacular. I love it. I love the um, focus peaking and I love the, the feel of it. And, and I like the screen on the back and the touch screen, all things I didn't have in my DSLR. And maybe I'll do a comparison between the Nikon D750 and the, the Z5, but um, the functionality of this camera I really like. It just, it's not 100% there yet, and that's really bothering me in certain situations. But as far as the lenses go for these cameras, for the, the Z line of cameras, the Z5, the Z6, 7, 6, 2, 7, 2, uh, they're, they're really nice lenses. I have two of them, and over the next you know year or two, I hope to, you know, fill out my bag with some more of these lenses, but I'm really, really liking them. They're built well, they feel good, and they're producing really sharp images. I'm gonna put a couple of videos down here for you. Um, this one is the last one we did, uh, where we talked about why I'm returning the Z5, and here's my real world use of the Z5. We went into Brooklyn and took, did some shooting around with it. So you can check those out if you're looking for the Z5. And, um, you know, maybe I'll do a review, like I said, about the Z5 against the D750, or maybe I'll have a new camera by then. Okay, see you in the next video.